Hi there, welcome to Zen English. My name is Harry and I will be a guest teacher here on Zen English. I have my own YouTube channel, Learn English with Harry, and you'll find a link in the description below. So I have a vocabulary lesson for you today and the vocabulary are adjectives to describe places. So adjectives that we use to describe places. I'm going to give you the list, okay? And then I'll go through them one by one and I'll give you some examples. Hopefully you'll be able to understand them. So. We've got 10 in total, 10 adjectives used to describe places. Cosmopolitan, polluted, thriving, accessible, vibrant, deserted, stunning, medieval, quaint, and bustling. Okay, so 10 adjectives. So I'm going to go through them one by one, give you a few examples. Hopefully you'll get an opportunity to use them and practice them. So cosmopolitan. Well, we use this word to describe those cities that are big and have lots of people from lots of other cities or countries around the world. So it has a cosmopolitan feel, meaning you go there and there, you don't know which city you're in because there's so many people from South America, Central Europe, Southern Europe, Asia. So a city like London is often described as a very cosmopolitan city because every corner you turn, you hear a different accent, you hear a different language, you go into a restaurant, the staff are from many, many different countries. So if somebody was asking you to describe London, then you might describe it as a very cosmopolitan city. So cosmopolitan, a mix of nationalities, a mix of different people, languages and cultures. Cosmopolitan. Second, polluted. So polluted, we all talk about pollution these days when we're talking about saving our beautiful planet. So when we describe a city as polluted, it means often that it is very dirty. There could be rubbish on the streets. If there's a river flowing through the city, which there often is, well then that river may be dirty, there may be old rusty bicycles and things dumped into the river. So a polluted city could have a dirty river, it could have household waste in rubbish bags that are not collected. Or it could be the atmosphere, the air that you breathe is polluted. So it's polluted because there are a lot of cars. So the exhaust fumes from the cars, you know, the pipe that comes from the back of the car, that spews out or coughs out carbon dioxide and that pollutes the atmosphere. So we could describe our air that we breathe in our cities as polluted. Often when you're driving towards a city, you'll see a sort of cloud or a haze hanging over the city. That's pollution. That's a sign that your city is polluted. All the atmosphere in this city is terrible. Nine times out of ten, six days out of seven, it is polluted. You cough and you sneeze and you come home with little black smuts or little black dots on your clothes or in your hair. You have to have a shower. It's a definite sign that the city is polluted. Number three, thriving. Yeah, when a city is thriving or a place is thriving or a country is thriving, it means usually that economically it's doing really, really well. Yes, the economy is thriving ever since the end of COVID. We had some problems like everybody had, but now the orders are up. People are out and about. There's a lot of activity. The restaurants are busy, the bars are busy, even the tourists are coming back. So our city is thriving. Another word could be buzzing. The city is buzzing, full of activity, full of people, back to where it was a few years ago. Thriving. Next, accessible. Well, places can be accessible and places can be inaccessible which is the, the opposite. So when something is accessible means usually that it's easy to get to, easy to find, easy to use. Okay, so we often use this word when we uh, talk about buildings, particularly in the center of cities. When the architects are designing new buildings, they have to make them accessible for wheelchairs. That's people who or have mobility problems and they cannot walk. So you have to make the building accessible. Therefore, there has to be a ramp instead of the steps, you know, a ramp that goes 
up to the building so that somebody in a wheelchair can get into the building and of course get out of it safely. So accessible means that you can get in easy, you can get out easy, you can find it easy. How accessible is your city? Or you can get a plane or a train or a boat to the city. So the city that I live in is Dublin and it's very accessible from Europe by plane. All the cities are connected. It's very accessible by water because ships can sail here from France or they can sail here from the UK. And if you're in another part of the city, well, then you can drive on some very fine motorways into the city. So yeah, the city is very accessible. When you get into the city centre, all the new modern buildings and a lot of the old buildings have been converted so that they are accessible by people in wheelchairs. They're accessible by people who have mobility problems. So accessible, easy to get into, easy to find. Vibrant. What is a vibrant city? Well, we used before the word thriving and vibrant is similar in, in some respects. Vibrant usually means it is buzzing, there's activity. You can sense it when you go into the city during the day or at night time. In some cities, they have a, what they call a vibrant nightlife, meaning a very active nightlife. Lots of restaurants, lots of bars, lots of clubs. Yeah? So there's lots of activity. Or the tourist industry is vibrant now. So there's lots of things to see, lots of sightseeing, lots of buildings, museums, galleries, all sorts of entertainment for people from different cultures that they can enjoy. It's a real vibrant city. There's a buzz about it. You can almost feel it vibrate with the, the sound. People chatting, people talking, people sitting on the streets ordering food, people going in and out. There's lots of things happen, so, happening. So vibrant is activity. Vibrant is buzzing. Vibrant is bouncing and everything in good shape. Okay, so a vibrant city. Deserted. Well, deserted could be the exact opposite. So when a place is deserted, it means it is empty or almost empty or there are no people there. In the times of COVID, many, many city centres around the globe were deserted. People were told to stay at home because they were in a lockdown situation. They weren't allowed to mix. So as a result, the shops and the centres of the cities virtually closed down and you could almost sense the problems if you walked or drove through the city, how deserted, how empty the streets were. Okay, so deserted usually means there's no activity. If you go into a desert, then there's nothing there. There's nothing growing. There's no trees, rarely any animals. So you can't see anything. So if a place is deserted, like a city centre, then or a shopping centre, that means there's no activity. There are no people there. The streets or shopping centres are deserted. They are empty. Stunning. So when something is stunning, it usually has to do with the views, what you can see. So a place can be stunning. So if you go to visit a particular valley or a particular mountain range or gorge or canyon, then you might see some spectacular views. So spectacular and stunning would be very Similar, they would be synonymous words, or indeed beautiful and stunning, again, synonymous words. So you're standing on the top of Grand Canyon in California and you're looking down and you can say, wow, this view is really stunning. It's really what I was expecting, okay? So it takes your breath away. So something stunning can take your breath away. So a beautiful place, a beautiful location, a beautiful mountain range can be described as spectacular, beautiful, indeed stunning. Medieval. Well, medieval is to do with the Middle Ages, going back many, many thousands of years, many centuries. So medieval, uh, when we talk about a place, usually means it's very old, very historic, so lots of perhaps old castle walls, old churches that have a medieval flavour or, or taste or look about them. So some people like to visit cities with that ancient history. Lots of towns and cities across the UK have medieval castles. Lots of 
towns and cities across Spain and France have also medieval castles that you can visit and you get a flavour for what life would have been like in those dark ancient days, medieval. Quaint. Well, quaint usually means something like you'd see on a biscuit tin or on a postcard, that beautiful little cottage design that you find tucked away somewhere in some nice country village. Oh, it looks really quaint. It looks very pretty, but somewhat antiquated, a little bit old fashioned, but very, very beautiful. So you see these little cottages with straw roofs, perhaps, or you see little buildings with signs from perhaps dating to the Elizabethan times, or you'd imagine a scene from a Charles Dickens book. So these could be described as quaint villages, quaint towns, quaint cities. Okay, so they're a little bit unusual, they're a little bit out of date, but they're very pretty and nice to look at. So you could describe a cottage as a quaint cottage when you can see pictures of roses growing up around the door, a little straw thatched roof, little windows that look out onto a nice pretty garden with a white picket fence around the garden. And you look at it and you think, hmm, this is nice and quaint, but it might not be practical. It might be a little bit of out, out of date, but it's still a quaint little cottage. So towns, villages can be quaint. So they're a little old fashioned, perhaps a little bit out of date, but very twee, very nice to look at. And then finally, bustling. A bustling city is full of activity. A bustling city could be full of cars, full of traffic. So you can picture a city like Cairo in Egypt, and that would be regarded as a bustling city. It might not be your idea of a great location because it's very, very busy, but it's certainly bustling, lots of activity. People on bicycles, people on motorbikes, car horns honking, honk, honk, beep, beep. People hardly able to cross the road because there's so much activity. People selling things on stalls, people trying to deliver things, people selling things from markets. So a real example of a bustling city. New York to me is a bustling city. The honking of the taxis, the screaming of the whistle from the, the traffic police, all sorts of noises that you can only hear when you visit New York. So it's a real example of a bustling, high activity city. New York, New York, they say it twice. Okay, so that's my lesson in relation to adjectives that describe places. And you can practice those. And if you have any problems with them, just listen to it again. Okay, that's the lesson over. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I'll see you again soon.